Let's discuss mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage, basically, is the whole reason why you use a simple machine. It's either going to make the work... Um, let me rephrase. It's either going to make the effort less and the distance greater, or it's going to make the distance less and the effort greater. So there's some kind of reason why you're using this simple machine, and that's the mechanical advantage. A mechanical advantage comes in two varieties. There's the ideal mechanical advantage, and there's the actual mechanical advantage. The ideal mechanical advantage is the theory-based calculation. It works perfect on paper. It's easy to figure out, because you don't have to have a lot of information to figure it out. Actual mechanical advantage is inquiry-based calculation. This is a real-world situation takes everything into consideration when figuring it out. The biggest difference between the two, between ideal and actual, is ideal does not take into account friction, and actual does take into account friction. To calculate the ideal mechanical advantage, which is typically abbreviated I D Pardon me. I am a ideal mechanical advantage. You take the distance of the effort and divide it by the distance of the resistance. To find the actual mechanical advantage, do it a little bit differently. That would be AMA. You take the force of the resistance and you divide it by the force of the effort. An example, let's say we have the inclined plane here that you see in this black triangle. And we have this box, it's in red, it's 50 pounds. We want to move that box, put it up on a shelf. Let's say that that shelf is 10 feet in the air. So we want to figure out the mechanical advantage the ideal and the actual of using this inclined plane. So we take this box and we put it on this plane and we got somebody over here who is pushing this box. Kind of a deformed person. <laughs> I apologize for that. So he's pushing it and he's pushing it so it gets up here to the top. Now let's say the distance of the inclined plane, the diagonal part, let's say that that is, let's say it's 50 feet from top to bottom. So the ideal mechanical advantage here, it's real easy to figure out. Take the distance of the effort. Well, the effort is this little guy right here. He's the effort. He's pushing this box 50 feet up this ramp. You divide that by the distance of the resistance. The resistance is this box is 50 pounds heavy. It's pulling down 50 pounds. That is the resistance. And these are referring to forces. I should label them as such. You know, the force of the effort is this little guy. And we have the force of the resistance. That's the box. So the distance that that box is traveling, as far as the resistance goes, we were trying to move that box up 10 feet. So the distance that that box moved, if we didn't have a simple machine, it would have just moved up 10 feet. So the distance of the resistance is simply 10 feet. Your feet cancel. If you divide something by itself, it cancels. We're left with 50 over 10, which reduces to 5 over 1. The ideal mechanical advantage of this inclined plane is 5 to 1. So what does that mean? That should mean if there was no friction. In other words, if this box was on top of uh, this inclined plane and um, it was greased down with lots of banana pills, no friction whatsoever that instead of this guy having to push with 50 pounds of effort, 
he would only have to push with 10 pounds of effort. He would have to put forth one-fifth of the effort that he would have to use to move this box. Lifting it straight over his head, 50 pounds. Pushing it up this ramp would actually be just 10 pounds. But the problem is, there is friction here. So the actual mechanical advantage of this situation would be very difficult for us to figure out because we don't know how much of the how much friction there is that's going to cause them to have to move this. Let's just say theoretically, and this is theoretically, that the force he has to put forth, let's say, is 12 pounds of force. And then, of course, the, I'm sorry, I wrote that in the wrong spot. Force of the resistance is on top. The resistance is the box. It's 50. To overcome that, using the ideal mechanical advantage, it would simply be 10 pounds of force. But there's friction here. So to compensate for the friction, maybe he would have to use something like 13 pounds of force. In these two situations, the mechanical advantages are different. Why are they different? Actual mechanical advantage incorporates friction. Ideal mechanical advantage does not incorporate friction. When you figure out your mechanical advantage, you're either going to have a mechanical advantage that's greater than one, or you're going to have a mechanical advantage that's less than one. When the mechanical advantage is greater than one, it's going to require less effort But the trade-off is, putting forth less effort, you're going to have to move the object a greater distance. If the mechanical advantage is less than one, it's going to require more effort. But the distance that you're traveling is going to be less. So greater than one, less effort, greater distance. Mechanical advantage is less than one, more effort, less distance. Please note, the mechanical advantage could never equal zero. Also, the mechanical advantage could never be less than zero. Those two things are impossible. It could never be zero, and it can never be less than zero. It has to either be bigger than one or less than one. It could be one. If it is one, then there's no point in using a simple machine.